Sound Speeds, and welcome to another episode of the Sound Speeds Podcast, a member of the Geek Rising Podcast community. Nothing but high quality podcasts here. Let's go ahead and start off by talking about how sound changes from air to water and vice versa. Inside this balloon is a hydrophone, that's a water microphone, and it's designed specifically to pick up sound in water. Your ear, on the other hand, is designed to pick up sound in air. So what's the difference? Well, for one, sound waves are more intense in water, so the hydrophone is designed for higher pressure sound levels. But if you put a hydrophone in air, then it doesn't work very well, unless you're very loud. This is also why humans have a better chance of surviving an explosion in air versus water. Intense vibrations in water are almost certainly going to destroy a human body because a human body is designed to exist in air. Sure, you can survive the pressure level of a swimming pool because the human body is designed to be within a certain pressure level. And the swimming pool water is within that pressure level, like this right here. This is the pressure range a human can survive in. Air is right around here. Water might be around here. 500 feet under air is maybe here, and 500 feet under water is off the chart. Similarly, your ears are designed to hear in air. Now, sure, you can hear in water, but there's an impedance mismatch. What's impedance, you might wonder? Well, in this case, it's resistance of any kind. And that is the resistance between going from air to water or vice versa. When you're in a swimming pool and you hear someone talking outside of the swimming pool, how do they sound? Usually, there's no mids and highs. They're very bass-heavy and distorted. Now, why is that? For the same reason that when you walk up on a nightclub, you hear more bass frequencies. Sure, there's more power put into the subs, but you are going to be able to hear the bass more because it travels through things much better than the mids and highs do. Higher frequencies are going to be bouncing off the interior walls and not going through nearly as much as the bass does. So a human voice outside of a swimming pool is going to hit the surface of the pool and then bounce off. Some of it's going to go through, but it's mainly going to be the lower frequencies. So when someone talks above water, their voice is mainly going to skip off the surface. You're going to lose a lot in the transfer to water. Mainly what's going to go through is going to be the lower frequencies. But what about the distortion? Sound travels at 343 meters per second in air, but 1,481 meters in water. Sound waves traveling from air into water are going to hit the surface of the water at different times, depending on where it is in the crest and trough. And once it hits the water and transfers through, it's going to be going at different speeds in the water, which is going to change the way the waveforms are shaped. The sound of my voice is hitting this balloon right here, but also here and down here and higher frequencies are going to be distorted and out of phase in different areas of the balloon wherever it happens to be hitting. And by the time it gets to the hydrophone, it's going to be detecting differences due to that stretching and distortion. So if a crest and a trough of a sound wave hit a balloon or water at a different time, it's going to cause phasing just like it does in air. Adding to that, the fact that the sound speeds up once it hits water, it's going to cause all kinds of distortions and mistiming in the waves as it goes through the surfaces. That and a lot of the sound pressure level is going to be reduced because the density of water is a lot higher than air, and it takes a lot stronger vibrations in air to transfer into water. Add on top of the, the rubber from the balloon, and we're not in a good situation here. The intensity in air needs to be a lot louder in order to transfer into water because of all the loss. Your ear has a little bit of air in it, and it's designed to hear sound in air. So air to air inside your ear, no problem. But the air inside of your ear is going to cause a little bit of distortion if your head is submerged in water because of the ways the sound are going to be traveling through the water and into your ear. The stronger sound vibrations are going to be going into your ear, but at the same time, they're going to be affecting the outside of your skull through bone conductivity in similar ways to like aftershocks headphones work, but not nearly as effective. But still, it's going to cause some distortion because your inner ear is hearing through air and your outer bone conductivity is hearing through water. So then what about sound going from water into air? Well, things move slower in water. You can tell because if you clap your hands in air, it's going to be faster than if you clap your hands in water. This is because water has a higher density than air and things move faster in lower density than they do in high density. Think about outer space. We can't travel thousands of kilometers per second on Earth, but we can in outer space. Now, the sound is also different when you clap underwater versus when you clap in air, because the sound is going to sound completely different when you clap in an area of higher density because of the slowness and because of the density of the medium it's traveling through. Similarly, sound in water is going to have a hard time vibrating the water enough to transfer a lot of it into air, 
so there's a significant amount of loss there as well. While most of the sound transferred from air to water is going to be lower frequencies, the sound going from water to air is going to be mainly high frequencies. And just like how a lot of sound vibrations are lost going from air to water, a lot are also lost when you go from water to air. And this is also because it's dissipated by the transfer and reflected off the surface of the water. So this hydrophone inside the balloon is more likely to hear the bass in my voice than the higher frequencies. It certainly won't help your voice to sound like that of Mike Delgadio because of the frequency loss and distortion, but it will do your voice quite a bit of favors if you happen to sound like someone like Banjo Scott. So what then if there were no bubbles and my voice instead was generated through an underwater speaker, a speaker that doesn't produce sound originating in air and then transfer it to water? To be clear, these sound vibrations are originating directly in water and with no bubbles. The hydrophone now picks up my voice just fine, or at least good enough for the circumstances. But what if I put an omnidirectional microphone that's not a hydrophone in an air bubble and then submerge that in water with the speaker? Sure, the rubber barrier being elastic is going to slow the transfer a bit from water to air just like it did from air to water. But all else considered, what do you think? Tell me what you think down in the comments. Hopefully this gives you some insight as to how sound moves from air to water and vice versa. I know this topic was keeping you up at night, which is why we decided to tackle it in this episode of the Sound Speed Podcast. And on that note, thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Sound Speed Podcast. I'll see you again soon with another episode. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.